Hello, everyone. Just getting myself situated here. All right. Zoom moved a bunch of buttons around on me, so I'm getting myself situated here. So if you're joining me, please let me know you're here, that you can hear me and see me okay. Let me know where you're joining from. Let me know what line of business you're in. I'd love to hear from you over in the chat box. We'll give everybody a little bit more time to join here. Go ahead and chat me in the chat box where you're joining me from, what line of business you're in. Hi, Michelle from Tucson. Welcome, welcome. All right, we're gonna let people filter in just a little bit. I know it's a weird time of day. <laughs> um, and we'll get started. I'm so excited to share this information with you today. If you are new to Zoom, um, specifically uh, Zoom webinar, make sure that you open up the chat box. It's down on the bottom if you hover over the screen so you can interact with me and other people. I'm so excited to have you all connect. I will also be using the Q&A function. So if you have any questions that pop up uh, that are on your mind while I'm speaking, please feel free to send it to me via Q&A. I will have my eye on the chat box while I'm going through and I will address questions along the way and there'll be time for questions at the end so please know that I will address your questions um, during the webinar so again if you're joining me please let me know where you're joining me from and what your line of business is I would love to know what everyone is up to okay so let's go ahead and get started so today we're talking about how to hire a virtual assistant so if you're here you're either on the verge, ready to hire an assistant, you've thought about hiring an assistant in the past and just don't know where to start, or you've been, you know it's somewhere out in the future for you, so you just wanna get ahead of the game and get some information. What, no matter where you are at in your journey, I welcome you, I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm so excited to share with you my knowledge on how to hire an assistant. Okay, so today we're going to cover quite a bit. I'm going to try and do this in 30 minutes to 45 minutes. We'll see how well I do. Please know that if you can't stay the whole time, a replay will be sent out afterwards for you to rewatch and also share with others that you think this would be valuable information for. All right, so today we're going to talk about what is a VA and what do they do? This always makes me laugh because I think of kindergarten cop, like who is your daddy and what does he do? So what is a VA and what do they do? <laughs> and then how does it all work? Um, where do I find one and how do I find the right one? So we're gonna cover all of those topics for you today. First and foremost, my name is Jen, if we've never met before. I'm a productivity and systems expert with over 15 years of experience in the administrative field and project management. So I worked my way up the corporate ladder and I got to the top. I was a chief of staff and I said, you know, I want to work with entrepreneurs instead. I didn't want all of my talents and skills to get lost in the corporate machine. I wanted to make the biggest impact where it is appreciated and valued the most. And that is with people who are trying to do everything themselves when they don't need to. So I shifted over. I started my own VA firm a few years ago, and that has since grown into a VA firm slash coaching relationship. So I actually now work primarily with entrepreneurs to coach them through the process of cleaning up their businesses and then also hiring their first team member. It's a remarkably rewarding um, business that I've built for myself. And so I also, I come from you from an administrative background, but also as a fellow business owner. Um, a little bit more about me. I am from Gilbert, Arizona. It's where I live. It's hot as hell here. <laughs> I'm not sure why we're here. I am the mother of two young boys. I also have a male dog and I added my husband. There's a lot of testosterone in my life, so I try to do as best I can. If you engage with me on any social media, you know I am wildly enthusiastic about personal and professional development. So if you have any good book recommendations, drop them in the chat box or send me a DM. I would love to check it out. And then of course, um, you can't really see it in this Zoom webinar, but I'm a huge Disney fan. In fact, I have Mickey Mouse ears.
appears all over the wall behind me. So that's just a little bit about me. So let's get started. My philosophy when I approach anything in my business and when I talk to people about productivity and business development is that there is no best way to get work done just the best way for you. So as you are not only joining my webinars, but going and looking at input from other people, please put it through the filter of, does this feel right to me? If it goes against your core senses of what your instincts are and how you work or how you wanna communicate or the brand you wanna build for yourself, just put it through the filter and let it go if it doesn't work for you. I am officially giving you permission to not take all of the advice that anyone gives you, including myself. Okay, here we go. We're gonna talk all about virtual assistants. First, what is a virtual assistant? I had to turn to Wikipedia because the dictionary doesn't have one. <laughs> and according to Wikipedia, this is the definition they give you. The key here is that they are self-employed and that they generally provide some sort of assistance to you. Quite literally, that is the definition of a virtual assistant. We utilize many, many, many different titles, so you're not gonna see a whole lot of consistency here. So you have anything from virtual assistant, virtual administrative assistant, virtual executive assistant, virtual personal assistant, virtual service provider, <laughs> um, and then you can also insert all the other titles that you see out there, social media specialist, marketing specialist, um, you know, SEO specialist, anybody who provides an additional third party assistance to you in your business likely falls under the virtual assistant category or offers that service as part of their package. So just remember, if you see the term virtual assistant, it can mean a lot of things. So this is why it's really important to understand who you're talking to and what they offer. I get this question a lot. What do virtual assistants do? This list in no way is comprehensive, none whatsoever. But I do want you to know that if you are looking for someone for general administrative support, you're gonna start with what we call the core four. And so there's inbox management, calendaring and scheduling, travel booking and expenses. And that's the core four. If you don't need somebody for all four of that, that's cool, take it away. Like if you don't have to deal with expenses, don't force somebody to do it for you or don't even ask. Um, but some creative ways to use virtual assistants that a lot of people don't really think about is customer interfacing, um, doing your business process management. So not only setting up your CRM, but managing your CRM workflow, sending contracting contracts to people, ghosting as you through your CRM is a huge benefit to having an assistant. Doing project management, event management, building your website. There is something called an online business manager, which is like a virtual assistant, like Hulkified. They are going to be the person who also manages all of your other third-party contracts. So that's like your own personal chief of staff. Another way I've seen virtual assistants used is for personal projects. One of the most creative ways I've ever heard of a virtual assistant being used is that someone was renovating a home and they didn't have time to work out the scheduling to do all the walkthroughs and the phone calls with all the different service providers and to go pick things out and to manage all the emails. So they hired a person, an assistant, a virtual assistant to just manage their home renovation. So as you're thinking about virtual assistants and what they can do for you, get creative, think outside the box. What are your pain points? What can they do for you? So the list is endless. I do some really, um, not unconventional and like weird things for my, my VA clients, but I do do things that you wouldn't normally think to ask somebody for. So definitely get creative as you're starting to think through what tasks you want to hand out. The rule of thumb that I tell people as they're approaching getting a VA, I say start with a list of everything you do every day, every week, and every month. And look at that list from the outside and immediately circle all the tasks you hate all the tasks you hate. And then look at it again and say, this is something that I don't necessarily hate. And it's not, it, it, for me, it's either way, it's a factor of running the business, but I can easily hand it off to someone. And so then you can start circling tasks and you will slowly start building a list of things that you're like, okay, now I know what I need to ask for. All right, so the other thing I wanna start you off with is a baseline of good to know information about virtual assistants. First and foremost, there is no widely recognized credential specifically for virtual assistants. I hear this a lot from people who come from 
corporate backgrounds or heavily credentialed backgrounds that they want someone who's certified. And unfortunately, there is no certification for virtual assistants. However, there is a certif certification for administrative professionals, and there are some widely recognized uh, different forms of certification. So if they have a broad administrative professional certification, you'll be able to look it up, you'll be able to check it. Um, but as far as if somebody comes to you and says, I'm a certified virtual assistant, please know that that just may mean that they took a course that was hosted by somebody, but there is no credentialing body that manages virtual assistants. The next thing to remember is that virtual assistants in and of themselves are business owners. So when you are looking to contract with a virtual assistant, you are hiring a third party. They are not your employee. Unless you are offering them benefits, they are not your employee. They are a partner for your business, but please remember that you will be one of many of their priorities. You will not be their only priority. The next is that there is a difference in the different types of VAs. And this is where people start to get really overwhelmed and really confused. So I want to make sure that we drive this home. Most people think of virtual assistants as a sole service provider. It's me in my office, working from my home. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. I contract directly with you. If you need anything, you call me, you email me, you got me. There's another form of VA contracting, and actually I've seen it primarily two specific groups, and they're VA firms. And so there's two different categorically firms that you want to be aware of. One is you have the head of the firm that is out collecting business and they kind of act like a matchmaker for you. So they have a whole group of uh, VAs that work underneath them. And what they do is they get in contact with you, they figure out what they need and they match you with a VA that has capacity, offers the skills that you need and is a good um, personality match for you. The second is where there's a head VA. And the only way to describe this is as if it was a secretarial pool waiting for work. So if any time you have work to send, you send it to them and they delegate it out to the team and they send it back. You don't necessarily always get the same assistant every time. Now, between the sole service providers and the VA firms, there are pros and cons to both sides, right? If you work with a sole service provider, say you're just working with me and I fall sick, the downside is you're out, right? Whereas if you work with a firm, if I fall sick, they would be able to substitute somebody in. Or if I'm going on vacation, they can substitute somebody in. So there's a different relationship based on the consistency of work and what you're looking for. Um, the one thing that I want you to be very aware of as you're looking to shop for sole service providers or VA firms is two things you need to understand. Who controls the workflow? So is it a one-to-one -one relationship? You can just text me or you can just call me or you can just email me and I get work done. Or does it have to go through a workflow and get put into something on their back end and they get to it when they get to it? The other is who owns the contract? Is it the VA or is it the firm? Firms are structured many different ways. So if you are going to work with a firm, make sure you that's part of the conversation you have with them is how, who owns the contract at the end of the day. Is it you as a firm or the VA that I end up working with? Okay. And the last piece, we all know this, but I always want to stress it, is you certainly get what you pay for. So if you go to a site, one of those $5 a job sites, you are going to get $5 worth of work. It is worth it to invest in someone who will be invested in your business. Now, a lot of people will ask me this, and I'm just going to address this up front. What do you pay a VA? It depends on your regionality. It depends on your industry. It also depends on the experience that you're looking for. I will say that a general VA will cost between $20 to $40 an hour. When you get above $40 an hour, you're looking at somebody who has a long history is highly specialized, or they are more of like a business development VA, so you're actually going to get a large business partner out of that person. So just something to keep in mind as you're looking at prices. Anything lower than $20 an hour, I would start to question where they're located, what history they have, and um, honestly, just the quality of their work. The other question I get to is, 
what if I want to hire somebody from overseas? And we'll talk about this a little bit later. There is nothing against overseas workers. There are a lot of people who work in, a lot of people always bring up the Philippines with me, um, but anywhere on the globe, there are virtual assistants and they're great virtual assistants. So if you choose to go outside of the United States, I just encourage you to make sure you're vetting them appropriately, making sure you understand exactly who you're working with and making sure you're getting all the proper documentation to work with them. Within the US, it's a little bit easier because we have some protocols in place that we're going to talk about later. But just make sure that if you are shopping outside the United States, that you just get your paperwork in order. There are pros and cons again to everything. Um, so just make sure you're taking care of yourself first and foremost. Now, how does it all work? I actually had this question pop up in my Instagram. I asked, hey, does anybody have questions about VAs? And someone typed this, how does it work? So we're going to talk about how it works. So we're actually just going to talk about how it works well. So you're, gonna, you're going to create a job description. You're going to put it out there. I'm going to tell you where. And then you're going to vet somebody. You're going to bring them on board. And you just need to make sure you onboard them first and foremost the right way. Get legal and legit. I don't care if the person who's helping you out is your cousin's best friend and she promises it is the best person you'll ever know. I don't care if the person who's going to work for you is your cousin. You sign a contract. You sign a contract. You get down in writing what they are expected to do for you, who owns what they create for you, and the expected pay, the duration of your engagement, et cetera. Um, there are lots of companies out there that offer VA contracts. So if your VA doesn't offer you a contract, there are lots of companies that offer a template for a proper VA or third-party contractor um, contract to use. One that I recommend is the Contract Shop. If you've never heard of that, I highly recommend checking it out, not only for this purpose, but for any other business purposes you have. Um, make sure you're clear on the payment terms and the service terms. Um, if you're working with somebody within the United States, make sure you check with your tax accountant based on how much you are going to end up paying someone because you will then likely need to file a 1099 or 1099. 1099 or 1098 form during tax season to prove that you paid them as part of a business expense. So you will need a W-9 form filled out from the VA to put into your records. Um, and those, you can just Google W-9 IRS and a form will come up that you can send to them and they fill out, sign and send back to you. Um, and the last one, and it's one that a lot of people don't understand they can do. You can ask a virtual assistant to complete a background check. Any VA that is doing it the right way will say, absolutely. The thing is you do have to pay for the background check. In fact, that's a legal thing. The business owner or the person who is hiring the virtual assistant has to pay for the background check. You cannot shift that cost to the assistant. So, um, if you do want to, there's a number of services out there. It's very easy to find. They can do it virtually. It's usually pretty quick. Um, and I've done it for almost all of my clients. It, it never bothers me. I don't know any VA that I is in my network has never been bothered by filling out a background check. So if that's going to make you feel better about bringing somebody into your world, do it. Please just do it. Um, the next way to do it to make sure it works well is to integrate your system, your assistant into your system. Um, and so that means making sure one, that they absolutely understand what you do. They need to understand how they are serving the greater machine of your business. The other is fun, from a functional perspective, make sure that they are signed up or utilizing softwares that are within your system. Um, and it's, bonus points if you can actually sign them up through your license. So a good example is if you use Google Suite to run your business or G Suite, um, make them an account under your company's account. That way, if for some reason your assistant ghosts you or something really unfortunate happens and they have to stop services right away, you have knowledge retention in your house. Okay. And so there's a number of different ways that you can work with a VA though. So say you're not that far along, you want to get an assistant, but you don't have this like formal setup. You don't have a G suite. You you've like pieced together like a Gmail and a Dropbox and a bunch of different tools. 
um, you can ask the assistant to work with you using their own email address and then grant them permissions or give them passwords um, to access all of your other accounts. If you are sharing passwords, any passwords, if you're sharing passwords or payment cards with an assistant, use LastPass. In fact, if you don't have a LastPass account yet, go sign up for it immediately after this webinar and get used to using it because you, there are so many control functions in there of who you share information with, how much they can see, and it quite literally, from my opinion, is the only way to share passwords with an assistant virtually. So um, as you're thinking about how they're going to work with you, think through those little logistical things from a, a software perspective, right? Do you want them to use your email address that you set up for them or do you want them to just use your theirs and you don't have a problem with it i don't encourage um allowing someone to log into your email client as you and ghostwrite as you and and that sort of stuff i think you really need to build some trust with people before you give them that kind of access to your inbox um, try to use delegate um, access as much as humanly possible the last part that you want to make sure you are doing to ensure that this all works well is you have to communicate and to be able to communicate effectively. There are certain things in your house you need to clean up. So first and foremost is what is your expectation on turnaround time? Asking them to respond immediately is completely unreasonable. Get out of here, Miranda Priestley. That does not work in the VA world. That is not how this works. So figure out what works for you in terms of turnaround time. Now, if you have emergencies arise and you want them to be available, work out some sort of communication plan to say, how do I get your attention when I'm having a fire? Otherwise, the default is, I would like an answer in 24 hours. I would like this handled in 48 hours. I don't care when you get this done. It just needs to get done in the next two weeks. So make sure that you're consistently outlining turnaround times, but make sure you set a baseline for your assistant. The other is figure out your preferences. Like we talked about the email address. Do you care if they communicate with whoever they need to communicate via their own email? Or do you want to set, the, are they gonna be interfacing with your clients and you maybe wanna set them up with their own email address at your domain, right? How do you want different folders handled? How do you want things saved down? How do you want them to communicate with you? Are you going to use a collaboration tool or task management tool? Are you going, like how do you prefer to be communicated with as far as chat and text and email and phone calls and all of that sort of stuff? So figure out all of those sort of preferences um, right at the front. You need to sit down and think about these things. You're bringing somebody into your house. And I use this laundry analysis or the analysis analogy a lot. And if you've been on my social media, you've seen it. This is like asking somebody to help you with your laundry and not telling them how you want the laundry done. They are going to default what feels good for them. And then that may not jive with you. And already you're starting off with friction. So take the time to figure out what your sticking points are before you even get started. And you'll have a much smoother transition and relationship to your VA. The other thing is be aware of your habits, guys. Like I, and habits and pet peeves are huge. And this is where I always have to have this like, this little talk with CEOs or anybody who's in business owners, anybody who's looking to hire an assistant, there's something you need to know. You're crazy. Everyone in this world is crazy. So the magic of the assistant world is that we find our brand of crazy. That's when you feel the magic happen with assistants. So be honest, don't be unapologetic, but be honest about what you need to, <laughs> yes, you are, right? So be honest about your ugly, show your ugly, right? You know, I, I just don't check my inbox. That's not actually me. But if that's you, be honest about it because then your assistant will know where they need to help you out, right? Or if you have a pet peeve, you hate when people text message you, like don't text message, tell your assistant that. I don't like it when people text messages me. I love, like, I have to have my calendar color coded. If my calendar isn't color coded, it drives me crazy. Be 
honest, show your ugly, because what will happen is it allows your assistant to determine, you know what, this is someone that I can match with. I'm happy to color code all damn day. I'm more than happy to go through your inbox and make sure we work out a system so that you don't even really have to check your inbox, right? And then also on the flip side of that, you have someone who just goes, self-elects themselves to walk away. I've actually done this before with a CEO. A C this was back in my traditional days. A CEO told me, I like to micromanage. He thought that was a great thing. I love to micromanage. And I flat out and I stopped him and I said, I'm just gonna stop you right there and I'm not trying to be impolite, but I can already tell you if you use micromanaging as a tool, I'm just not gonna be a good match for you. And we respectfully parted ways. So this is a great way to show your ugly and get the support you need. Okay. All right. There we go. Now you're probably all like, yeah, this sounds good. Where do I get one? <laughs> so let's find you a VA. And I want you to really stop overthinking this. I really do start with your network. Send out a message to your friends, fellow business owners, your Facebook group, your mastermind, whoever you're in touch with and send them an email and say, hey, I'm looking for a I need them to help me with X, Y, and Z. Does anybody know anyone? It's that simple. And chances are the people you know know someone who has used a VA They've used a VA themselves or are a VA and you don't even know it. So just first and foremost, tap into your immediate network. The next thing is use social media. If you're on LinkedIn, great. Send that out. There are VA groups on LinkedIn that you can post job postings into. You can put up, if you're big on Instagram, do an Instagram story. Say, hey, I'm hiring. Here are the things that I'm looking for. If you might be interested, send me a DM or drop your email into this little box and I will send you the job description. We'll set up a call. Use social media because the thing is, is if somebody already follows you, there's a good chance that they already know what you're looking for. They already like you. They already know how your business is being. They're interested in you. So you already have this investment from them. So then it becomes you filtering through the people. This is huge. And then if you're still at a loss, you're like, isn't there like a space where they all just like congregate? There is. <laughs> so there is something I, there are many, many associations out there. But my favorite and the one that I found the most value, both as a VA and as someone who has helped people assistance is the International Assistance Association. They have a free process called the RFP process or the request for proposals process that allows you to post a job description. And once you hit submit, that job description is sent out to their entire membership via email. It is also shared to their private Facebook group and people will just flood the answers or their responses back to you. I will tell you, I helped find um, a former client. I was actually replacing myself, helped him find a VA back in December. We posted in the Virtual Assistance Association uh, RFP process for an assistant and within 48 hours had over 30 responses of very qualified people to sift through. So then I had to sift through it. We set up phone calls and within a week, he had a VA not only selected, but onboarded and he's still working with that assistant today. So make sure you're using the tools immediately at your disposal. Don't worry about job boards or anything like that. Start with your network, start with your social media. And then if you're still stuck or you just want to cast your net wide, submit an RFP with the International Virtual Assistance Association. All right, so how do you hire the right one? right? We're all short on time. We don't want to go through this process and be like, oh, I went through the process and it's not the right person. So how do you hire the right one? We talked about this. Make sure you know your needs, your preferences, and your expectations. And this goes deep, guys. So this is not just, I need someone to make sure I answer my emails every day. You need someone who can draw your attention to the most important emails every day. You want to be able to log into your inbox and know exactly what you need to address. Or you need someone to book all of your travel and put it into your calendar. Or 
you would prefer somebody who's in the same time zone as you. That's another thing to think about. This is virtual. There's a good chance you don't find somebody within your state. So make sure you're specific. I need somebody in my time zone or I'm willing to accept somebody in Eastern time and Central time. But if you're mountain and Pacific, it's too much of a time difference for me. Make sure you know that and make sure you know your expectations as far as your relationship with them, as far as how you wanna communicate, when they're available. If you are offering a large number of hours, say you're going from like what I call like the part-time to full-time. So the 20 hours to the 40 hours. It is perfectly acceptable for you to say, I need 20, hour, 20 hours to 40 hours of your time. Can we talk about when I can access you? When can you be consistently accessible for me? Um, they're all, I also didn't talk about this, but it is something to think about is there is such a thing as just having a VA on hand isn't going to work. But if you're like, I only need them for like a few hours a month, there are VAs out there for you. There are two different ways that they want to be paid. It's either hourly or retainer. Some of them will do project if you're doing a project. Um, but make sure that if you're on retainer, they're going to tell you how many hours are going to be available for you anyways. If they're hourly, there's a lot more flexibility there. So just go ahead and have these conversations with VAs. Don't let those little logistical things stop you from finding someone to help you because you will find someone who just needs five hours a month and they'll help you do some social media scheduling and all that sort of stuff. So think outside the box and have the confidence to just ask. All right, does anyone have any questions? If there are any questions, please fire them into the chat box, fire them into the Q&A. Did pretty good here, I'm 31 minutes. <laughs> I'm really impressed with myself. Um, I don't see any questions coming in, so I'm going to address the next thing. If you need more support, here's where I wanna to talk to you. So if you're in my first column here, if you say, I am ready, I just need someone to help me firm up the details, I got you covered. I offer what's called a hiring a VA consultation. We'll jump on the phone. You talk me through what you're thinking about asking, what you're thinking about paying, what, how you're going to structure things, and I'll help you firm up all the details, and I will help you write the job description, okay? Now, if you're like, oh, this sounds so good, but God, Jen, my business is a mess. Like, it is messy. It is like the secret Monica Geller closet of, like, messy. If you are like a photographer and you still haven't set up a CRM, so you don't even know what you're bringing people into. If you've been do flying by the seat of your pants and you don't even have systems in place, but like, you know, you need help. I have a, a, a coaching program called the game plan for growth. What we do is we start with you. We're going to figure out how you actually prefer to work. I'm going to set you up on systems that actually align with how you prefer to work rather than fighting against it. We're going to, I'm going to coach you through what systems I think you need to have in place and set up before you hire an assistant. And then as the last step, if you feel like you're ready, I'm going to coach you through the process of hiring a virtual assistant. This also includes helping you create a job description. Now, if you are in the last bucket and you're like, this is all well and great and I'm ready to go. But like, can't I just pay you to do this for me? Yes, you can. <laughs> so I have what I call the Growth Accelerator Operations Takeover. What you are getting is a COO, HR business partner, and a badass VA all in one bucket with me. I'm going to come in. I'm going to assess how you're working. And again, make sure it's not fighting with how you natural, naturally and instinctually choose to work. Um, and then I also will go through, I'll audit your business. And then I personally, I'm not sending this out to anybody else. I personally will set up your systems for you. If you have existing team members, I will train them on the new way that we're doing business. And then I will go out and I will write your job description. I will find your VA for you. You will interview the top three candidates. You will select them and then I will train them. So at the end, I will hand you back a perfectly systemized business with a VA ready to help you out. If any of this sounds good for you, and if you want any more information on this, please visit jenlawrence.co slash services. I have all the descriptions there. I have some, a form you can fill out and we can set up a free consultation call and see if any of these are the right fit for you right now or in the future. And 
Last but certainly not least, I am a millennial and I love my social media and I love connecting with people. So if we are not yet connected, please feel free to shoot me an email, visit my website, join me on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and I would love to connect with all of you. So with that being said, that's it. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you're ready to assess and share your crazy with an assistant and have exponential growth in your business. I can't even tell you what having a virtual assistant will do for your business. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me in the future. Until then, I hope you have a good one.